Loving someone can be the easiest and hardest deep affection one can have. It can be easy because the ones you love are usually the ones who support you and the ones you rely on. It can be hard because at some point of your life, you may lose that loved one. You can lose a loved one from either a tragedy or even from growing apart. Losing someone can be a very difficult thing to go through, but it doesn't necessarily mean it's a bad thing. From their death, you can learn something. I have realized that a person at every moment of their life is always learning something new. A baby learns how to talk a specific language, learn how to walk and do certain things. Then they go to school and learn an amazing amount of lessons. But the one thing that not all schools teach is to love and cherish your loved ones. When I was 13 years old, I lost my beloved baby sister. She was only two years old. It was the hardest thing I've ever faced till this day. My baby sister's name was Rubina, but we called her Ina for short. Ina was diagnosed with Down syndrome. She spent most of her life in a hospital taking medications and getting checked to see if everything in her system was all right. I remember um, a span of about three months when she was in the hospital every single day taking medications and getting injections. Whenever I saw her, her arm was bandaged or bruised from all the injections that she has gotten. But even with all that, my baby sister would just forget about everything that was happening to her and play with other children and laugh and enjoy her life. Her smile was the only thing that kept my family close after all that happened. My mom used to tell me whenever Ina got a shot, there would be tears stinging in my mother's eyes and my baby sister would look up at her and smile as if she was telling her, I'm all right, mom, don't cry because of me. Because of how my mother said that with so much pain and emotion, it urged me to think about life differently. My, ba my baby sister's death gave me a reason to see life in a different light. It made me want to make sure that my baby sister's death wasn't for nothing. I wanted to make her proud. No matter where she was, I wanted to make her proud. I didn't know how to do that at that time, but I think I do now. It is human nature to take others for granted. People don't realize that whatever they have, whether it is their friends or family, they often don't appreciate them until they're gone. From international surveys, the thing that people regret the most in life often relate to the relationships they have built with others. But I ask you, instead of regretting about the people you lose or the relationships that fall apart, why not cherish every single day you have with those you care while you still can? And you can start doing this today. Even if you haven't had dinner with your family for the past few days, or you haven't done anything together with them, there is always a thing called today where you can start new. From those international surveys, there's nothing about not getting a specific piece of clothing or buying a new iPhone. They all regret the thing that most of us have already. Why should we regret in 10 years' time the thing that everybody regrets when we have the chance to cherish it instead? I hope you can learn from my loss. After losing my beautiful baby sister, I went through a phase, and I might even still be going through that phase till this day. When I was in middle school, I didn't really care about how I did. I just went with the flow, and wasn't that sad or disappointed if I got a B, like how I kind of do now. In the seventh grade, I cared a bit more, and I strived for better grades. It wasn't until my babysitter's death that I started to live for A's. Living for grades and not living for you is a really disappointing thing to do. Some people might think it's weird. When mourning the loss of a loved one, it would be natural to lose focus on schoolwork while I did the opposite. I tried harder to make sure that she was proud no matter what, and I felt the only way I could do that was to study hard and get good grades. Well, it paid off. I got good grades. But while I gained something, I also lost something. I lost the connection with my family. I noticed at the time that I spent with my family was lessening, and then all of a sudden I realized through my sister's death that the, the time that I have with my parents and siblings is not forever. It doesn't matter if you're not good at something. If you're interested in it, try and practice hard. Practice actually does make perfect. But, don't make, but make sure you don't lose yourself to your work. Instead of losing yourself, you should regain yourself. Take something life-changing out of your experiences. The life-changing thing could be realizing that not a people have what you have family, loved ones, or even a good education, and that you need to be grateful for everything you have. Last year, 55 million people died. Those 55 million people left behind loved ones, family members, friends. Who's going to miss them? 
Death can be a frightful thing, especially for those who are left behind. It can also seem unfair when loved ones are taken away before their time. But as I try to believe, everything happens for a reason. I remember one day I was with my friends having a good time and then all of a sudden my mom calls me and tells me to come home. When I asked why, she said that I needed to come home and babysit my baby sister because she had errands to run. Back then it was a pain watching over her, but when I think about it now, I would do anything for her to be in my life and the chance to watch over her just one more time. That day when I was in my building waiting for the elevator to come down, I wished for my baby sister to have never been born. Well, I kind of got my wish. Those words were the most regretted words I've ever passed through my mind, and I sometimes think to myself, how did these petrifying words appear in my brain? I noticed that um, when preteens or teens lose someone they're close with, they tend to stop trying. They stop trying to fulfill their dreams, start bad habits, and just don't care anymore. Being a teenager is hard. I know because I am one. You are pushed to be the best. College and the future is just a pile onto that stress. Teenagers' moods and personalities can change really easily. Even if you think you're all grown up, to your parents, you are still the little child. If your parents care for you and love you with all their hearts, why can't we do the same? If kids truthfully cherish their family and don't take them for granted, I truly believe people's lives can change. Now it may seem like your parents don't understand you, but in a few years' time, you're going to look back and admit that many of the things they told you were right, and much of the advice they gave you was wise. Parents can be really strict, or they can be really easygoing, but remember that how your parents raised you shapes who you are today. We need to learn and realize that loving the ones that are close to us should not be a hard job to do. You don't have to buy them anything or call them daily. A simple hug or goodbye kiss when you're leaving the house can mean a lot. Simply saying a word with two syllables, hello or goodbye, can mean something for your loved one. One thing I learned from losing my sister is that we have to start loving the ones that are close to us before they're gone. Family should be the most important thing in life, even if some of us have little of it. I remember the day my beautiful baby sister died. My aunt came to my school in the middle of the morning to pick me up. The school manager came to my class to tell the teacher to excuse me, and she asked if my sister had been sick. Once I heard those words, I knew what had happened. My aunt didn't even say anything. She just had tears in her eyes. My mind was blank. All I could think was nothing. I was so shocked that my wonderful baby sister was actually gone. Once I actually saw my sister, all I could think was, what now? What am I supposed to do? Some of the voices inside my head were saying that everything was going to turn out all right, and other voices said to punish others so that my pain could go away. Even if you do push away people, it's not going to heal you. All it's going to do is hurt even more. Respect is also an important thing to have for your family members. Even if they're younger than you, you have to respect them. My parents are super strong and caring. They have gone through thick and thin to make me the life I'm living, and I'm so thankful for that. My mom is the most strongest person I've ever met. She has gone through hell losing one of her daughters, and she's immensely strong. I always wanted to be as strong as her, but it's hard. It's hard wanting people to see you as strong, but really you cry yourself to sleep. I can't imagine life without her. My father is the most caring and loving person in the world. He never raises his voice to anyone, and he works day and night, nonstop, just to make our life easier. He is so selfless. He does everything for his family and nothing for himself. When I grow up, I want to be my parents. I want to be the person who would do anything for their family. My big sister is also a huge inspiration for me. She tries so hard in everything, and all the hard work pays off for her. She got a 100% scholarship to a really good school in America and to also make sure I fulfilled my dreams. She helps me make big choices and she's always there for me. When my big sister and I were young, we used to fight all the time. We still do sometimes, but we both know we love each other. My little sister is also a person whom I truly respect. Even though she's still little, she has a personality of love and she's the kind of person who makes you forget all the stress. She laughs every single day, and that laugh makes everyone laugh. She makes life worth living. I participated in an exchange program to Japan just this past month. During the first few days I booth with my host family, I was really homesick. 
whenever I did something with my host family, I wanted to be with my own family. That month was where I truly realized you need your family. You need them to be there. You need them to care for you. We are still teenagers. Life won't get easier, and there's a good chance it'll become harder every single year. So even if you think you would do so much better without your loved ones, think again. Remember all the times where a family member helped you with something. For an example, helping you with your homework, cleaning your room, making you food. They may even want to listen to all your teenage problems, even if they are the problem. They're always going to be there for you, even when you might not want it. Try visualizing life without specific members of your family. Life will be difficult and empty. I know we are still teenagers, and I suppose some of us won't even think about these things, but my recommendation to you is to do think about them. In the end, it won't be a piece of clothing or a new iPhone that you will miss. It's going to be your own family. One of the hardest parts of life is losing someone and not knowing what to do about it. So when you ask yourself the question, what now? Listen to the voice that comes from your heart. Listen to the voice where it says, everything will be just fine as long as I have people to love and people who love me. I lost my wonderful baby sister, but I also gained the realization that love needs to be shown every single day you have with those you care. You have to show love while you still have the chance. Thank you.